Hi, this is Kay from Kay Digital Studio, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make rings or binder rings for your digital planner. For an example, using the new GoodNotes 5 app, still a few bugs in this app. Here's some examples of rings that I drew in Procreate. And then, just as another example, And then here are my newest rings that I also made in Procreate. So I'm going to show you several different methods of creating these rings and I'm going to be utilizing two different apps. I'm going to be utilizing Keynote that already comes with most Apple devices as well as Procreate um, which is an app that costs about $10.99 or so in the US from the Apple Store. So. I'm going to start with Keynote first, just because that's um, essentially the easiest app to make these rings in. And I'll show you an example of some rings that I was creating earlier. So here's just a few examples, and all the tools that I use to make these rings um, are in Keynote. So I'm going to begin by starting a new presentation, white background. Delete these, okay. So you'll begin by pressing this plus button in the top right hand corner and there are several different ways of creating rings in Keynote as well. So I will show probably my favorite way first. So I clicked on this curved line option and then I'm just going to situate how I want my curves for the ring. pretty good and again this is just all personalization how you want these rings to look whether you want them to be a little bit whimsical if you want them to be realistic or just anything based on your style so I'm going to set the width of this line at about hmm maybe 14 um, but of course, this is digital, you can change it later if I desire. So, oops, I'm just going to set this as a darker gray color, that's fine. And then I'm gonna come up here again and press the circle. And these are essentially the holes in your paper. So you're gonna line these up. Oops, and I'm gonna make this black. You're gonna click arrange and then move it to the back. Um, whoops. I'm gonna zoom in here and push this down a little bit. Copy and do whatever I just did. Paste, because we want even circles. And then I'm going to arrange this circle back as well. Perfect. And then we have straight edges here, which I really don't want, so I'm gonna come back in. I'm going to grab another circle. And this circle I'm gonna make more oval shaped. And a really annoying way to rotate shapes in Keynote is actually using your fingers. So you're gonna press one finger down and then twist with your other finger. Kind of a painful way to rotate shapes in Keynote. And then I'm just going to Kind of match the edges here to make a more curved ending. I might need to rotate this some more. And again, this will all just come with practice um, and patience. Perfect. And then I'm just going to make this the same color. Um, great. Copy. We're going to paste, but we have to rotate this. So, oops. Press and... Now I'm the one struggling. Press and twirl. Then we just need to resize it a bit. Uh, 
amazing. So this is the basis of our ring structure. If we wanted to make this a little bit more realistic, we can also add in a glare. And I add in a glare by doing this. Clicking the circle again. I'm gonna flatten this out, make this super skinny. And then we're just going to change this to an either white or an off-gray color. So we added a bit of a glare. And you can choose where you'd like your glare to show on the rings depending on where you want the light to hit it. So this is the light coming in down this way. You can also move your glare to the left or the right side of the ring and that just depends on how the light hits it. So I normally like my light to hit it down the center. You can also add a glare using the line again. Um, so I'll show you how to do that as well. So you're gonna get the curved line again. Kind of match it to your ring. And then I'm gonna thicken up this line a bit. Again, I like my glare to be kind of in the center on the top most part of the ring. And I can add white or I can add more of an off gray color. I think I'm going to do white and then do kind of an off white. shift it more to the side if I wanted to. So there's a look at one of the rings. Um, this is the type of ring where if your notebook was flat open and then you can zoom in and then select all of these shapes. Oop, I forgot one. Group and then copy. And these are just putting them in a line and making them more look like rings. So that is one way of creating rings in Procreate. I'm going to show one other way. So you're gonna start with this rounded square option. Zoom in a bit. And then of course you're gonna make this as fat, as long as you would like this. And I'll go like that, that's pretty good. I'm gonna come in and I'm um, going to choose the gray color. Another option for the squares at least is the option to add an image, which is really great. Um, I have several metallic backgrounds um, that I got free off Google, super easy to find. So if you want a more realistic looking ring like I've created in my um, more recent planners, you can use that as well. So I'm going to choose a more metallic background that kind of has some white glares. So I'm going to click, hmm, I'm gonna click scale to feel. So, as you can see, it's more realistic looking, and I also have glares already built into the picture itself and not having to add them. So, then I'm gonna come up here, add some circles. And again, these are just the holes, technically, of your page. Change this to black and arrange to the back. Copy and paste and move this to the back. So I think I'm going to make this just, oops, just a little bit thicker. Yeah. Move my circles around. Oops, and then you're gonna click with one finger and then get the other shapes in there. Group and copy. So I'm just going to resize this. Copy the new size. Oops. And paste. 
To make sure you have your spacing correct with your rings, you can also come down to guide and make sure, oops, and make sure your, all your guides are turned on. So these will help you space things just a little bit more evenly. And of course you can put these rings as close together or as far apart as you would like. Um, a little trick so you don't have to continue copy and pasting the same ring over and over again is you can come back in and you can select group and copy. And you can just keep doing this over and over again. Oops. until you have the number of rings you would like. And so here is another option for how to create rings in Keynote. And of course, there's different variations with how you would like your rings. Here are a few rings that I was working on earlier. Um, so here's me going with the curved line option that I was working on. Um, here's me beginning a different approach um, with the squ rounded square option. As you can see, I used essentially the same metallic background here. And then here is me actually using a circle instead of a rounded square for my ring structure. And then you'll just add the circles in as well, make the basis of the ring whatever color you'd like, and if you want, you can add a glare. Um, these are glares that I manually, man, manually created, so. As you can see, there's different variations you can take with how you create your rings in Keynote. So now we're gonna switch gears and show you how to draw your rings in Procreate. And this will come with a little bit more practice and patience. So here's an example of stuff I was working on earlier. Oops. So these are the rings that I hand drew that appeared in my Earlier planner editions, I recently spent even more time creating rings, so my rings look a little bit more realistic now. But I think these look great. Um, if you're a beginner learning Procreate, this is not a bad job at all. So here's a little hint as far as how you're going to create your rings in Procreate. So just keep that picture in mind. So how I normally start making my rings in Procreate is I'm going to come up here to this plus button. And I'm just gonna go with screen size as my canvas because that's totally fine. I don't need any of these specific sizes, so the size of my screen works great. And the brush I'm using is actually going to come with the Procreate app. It's not an extra download or anything. I'm actually gonna come into this inking category and I'm gonna choose the technical pen size. And I'm going to choose a grayscale. As you can see, I have tons of color palettes, but just any light gray will do, honestly. So I will choose this one. Um, if you'd like to see the hex code, it is hashtag six nines. So if you're interested in using the same color as me, that's the one I'm choosing. So I'm just gonna test out the pen size. It's pretty good. So the pen size is set to about 3%. Um, which is pretty thin. So how I normally begin with my rings in Procreate is I draw a line. And if you hold your pen steady, then Procreate normally um, perfects shapes for you. Um, that's a little crooked, so I'm gonna straighten it. Um, sometimes I'll go ahead and draw out the full square and have that mimic as my paper, but a straight line will do the job just fine. So what I'm gonna come in and do is I'm going to go ahead and start creating the curved ring structure that we all know so well for landscape planners. I'm just gonna come in and draw a simple curve and see how I like it. Um, again, draw steady on your iPad and if you hold your pen still, in the last spot, you'll it'll automatically perfect your shapes and procreate if you have the update. Um, and then if you wanna edit your shape, you can come up here to this gray bar that'll pop up after it perfects your shapes, um, and you can click Edit Shape. 
So it recognizes that I drew kind of an ellipse structure. And so I'm going to come in and just kind of straighten this up a bit. I can make it as thin or as thick as I'd like. Um, I normally like my rings just a little bit on the thick side. So I'm just gonna do that. So here is my ring structure. Didn't take any super artistic skills. Um, shout out to um, the perfect shape for Procreate because that's the main person doing the work here at least. Thank you, AI. So then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to draw the second loop, essentially the same exact loop. I'm gonna keep my pen steady on the last point and it'll auto perfect the shape. So I kinda did a little wonky ellipse here, so I'm gonna go ahead, click edit shape, and kind of change a bit how I made this. Again, this will all take some practice and working with Procreate a bit. Procreate can kind of be a pain for those of us who aren't super artistic. Awesome, so I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. Um, again, whenever you hand draw your rings, they're not all gonna be the same. Every time I hand draw my rings, they're a little bit different each time. Um, so this is, the ring structure I have currently going on. And then what I'm going to do with my leftover ends here is I'm actually gonna come here and then curve to this one. And then auto perfect that shape as well. So I'm just gonna come in and edit this one just a little bit. And then I kind of just finished off this ring structure. So this is the ring I currently have. This is my paper where my line is. And then I'm going to come in and draw the whole of the page. Hold my pen steady, and again, it perfected the shape for me. So let's tell it that I'm drawing a circle. So then you can change how you want your circle to appear. And here is the basis of your ring. So I'm gonna come up here to my eraser and then erase this line in the center of my ring. That's my ring. Then I'm gonna come up here to the select tool and select the inside of this. And then choose black or maybe an off black, drop it in. And then I'm gonna come over my lines because I don't want the gray pencil to show where I was sketching. And then I'm just lightly coloring in. Same pencil, same um, weight of the pencil. And there I have my black hole of the page, essentially. And so I'm gonna come up here to this automatic select tool again and click the ring itself. And then this is where you can be a little bit more creative, especially if you're well-versed with Procreate. Um, you can actually pull in some gray, so I'll just show you briefly how to do that. So you can pull in some gray here, and then if you want to give your ring a more metallic looking look, essentially, um, you can click white, and then this is normally where I like to change my brush, so I actually change my brush to artistic. Again, the brushes I use come with Procreate itself. Oh, sorry, it's airbrushing. So click the category airbrushing, and then you can click from a number of these airbrushes. I normally just go with the soft airbrush, and I make sure it's all the way low or just a tiny bit above the bottom. And then you can come in here and just lightly put in some white airbrushing to kind of give it its own glare. If you go a little bit thicker, you can kind of get a more highlighted glare. And it's just all about practice and what you like with Procreate. So you can add in a few highlights here. Here you can see I'm adding in a pretty significant highlight here on the edge. So you can see how this can come together if you're really artistic and have an eye for details. This definitely takes time and is not an easy five minute project. So you can kind of play around with the shading there. So there's a bit of my ring. I could also work on this more. 
So there's my ring. You can also do it kind of a cheat way, really. So I'm gonna double tap all of my recent projects. Um, if you don't know Procreate that well, double tapping undoes whatever you just lost did, essentially. So I'm just hardcore tapping on my iPad, undoing all of the stuff I just showed you. So I'm going to come in here and put some Come up here and select my ring, put some gray in there, perfect. So I'm gonna come in here and select my ring. Oops, select the line itself. So whenever it comes to selecting items, whenever you click something automatically, it may not select when you first click it. So you can toggle the selection by pressing down on your iPad and swifting left or right. So I just want the ring itself. Um, as you can see, it's kind of getting the line in there, so I'm gonna have my selection threshold on the lower side. Okay. So then I'm gonna take my three fingers, slide down, oops. Now I really messed with the threshold. As you can see, this is just all a game. Three fingers down, and I'm gonna click this copy and paste option right here. Then I'm, I'm gonna come up to layers, I shouldn't be there. I'm gonna come up to my layers and then, what did I do? Okay, and then I'm going to press this plus button up here. Then I'm gonna click the wrench in the top left corner and then I'm going to click insert photo. And this is where I like to have fun because there are plenty of commercial free images on Google where you can find a whole bunch of metallic backgrounds because metallic is a difficult texture and look to mimic. So I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to use this metallic background that I found on Google Images. Whoopsies. Zoom up out a bit because this is a huge picture. And then I'm going to shrink it down. And essentially you're going to cookie, cookie cut and paste whatever image on this. Um, this is normally called masking in the digital planning world. So I'm gonna come in and just change how I want this picture. So that's how I want it over my ring. I'm pretty settled with that. So I'm gonna come back over here to my layers. Click this inserted image layer from earlier. Select. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and click invert. And as you can see, it created, it essentially cookie cut our picture that we inserted on top. So this is, exactly what we want. It looks more realistic for those of us who aren't artistic, which is fabulous. So we're gonna come back up here to the layers. We're gonna click this layer and double click. And then we're going to click clear. So now we have our lovely ring cookie cut and pasted our metallic background on. So it looks way more realistic. We didn't have to spend all that time trying to put in our own layer and textures with metallic backgrounds. Now normally I don't leave it here. I do like to tidy it up a bit. I do actually like putting in my own personal glare, but that's just me personally. If you're satisfied with this ring product, fabulous. So I'm actually gonna come in and show you how I finish up the rest of this. So I'm actually gonna come in very lightly with my eraser, pretty fine. My brush is set really low because these are fine erase marks that we need to make. And I'm just gonna zoom in and erase this paper line that I made for myself, just as kind of a guide, um, as you can see. So then I'm just finally erasing these gray pixels that are left over. And then I'm going to do that here as well. This is kind of a off-white, there we go, white, white. And then I'm gonna increase the brush size down here because I don't necessarily need that much fine detail down here. And I'm just going to erase the rest of this line. Strengthen, or er, shrink my brush size again because I need more fine detail again as I approach the ring. 
So this is what I'm left with. This is the single ring that we have slaved over. We're gonna come up here to gallery. We're gonna exit our project. I'm gonna click select. I'm going to select it, hit share, hit PNG, save image. And then I'm going to come into the app called Magic Eraser. Magic Eraser is free and it's an option for you to make a more transparent background. So they normally show ads to keep the app running itself. So you're just gonna click out of the ads. We're gonna have fun watching some of these ads as we wait for this app to load. Sweet. Then I'm gonna click this ring project that I recently made and I'm just gonna crop this a bit because I don't need all of that white space. It's pretty good size. Click done. And then you're just going to click bang and it erases the background for you. You're gonna click this box with the up arrow. You're gonna click the picture and you're gonna click high resolution because we want our pictures to be nice quality. We're gonna exit out of that. And then let's go back into Keynote. And this is a great way to organize your rings when you're done creating them. So I'm creating a new presentation to set and organize my rings. So I'm gonna click this plus button up here, photo and video to my albums where this beautiful ring that I just created was saved. Ba bam we're gonna put it right there. And then I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste. And then we're gonna start this process over and over again. Amazing. So here's my rings along the side, and just to show you what it looks like if you were to add a page to say a notebook or a planner, here's my page, I'm going to arrange it back, and voila, we just made our planner rings for landscape or portrait view planners. Amazing. I just flipped the page. And these are ones drawn in Procreate. I personally like drawing my rings more in Procreate. It all took practice. Um, as you can see, these rings look even a little bit better than the rings I showed you previously for the planner I'm currently using. A planner that, if you like, is available in my Etsy shop, which will be in the description below. But as you can see, every time I go to draw my rings in Procreate, they get a little bit better each time. So it does take practice. Um, just an example of rings that I created before. So these are the current rings I use. These are my favorites. I used the same method, the same Procreate method, and I imported my own metal background for this as well and masked it. And I added in the glare. Hopefully you can see that better. I realize a black screen isn't great for video. So as you can see, I added in my own personal glare to the metal background. And then here's a rose gold option that I created. And then here's the ring I created today. Spent a little less time on it just to show you the basics of creating it. But the more practice, the more time you put into it, the more realistic your rings are likely to be. Especially if you import free images and metallic backgrounds and kind of add your own personal glare and procreate. Um, but if not, that's completely okay because we get this ring, which is still pretty realistic looking. And it's a lot of fun and pretty awesome. So again, here's a second look of the rings all together. As you can see, since the rings are all together, it even looks more realistic as it's all tied in. So I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments below, but um, if not, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.